here at the Venice Film Festival 2023 edition, the Horizonte section. This has been a long time coming. Uh, just congratulations on getting to a prestige film festival with your debut. I never inquire about choices about black or white or color or film stock. However, the shades of gray here represent a, a soullessness, a, a lack of life, uh, an existence. And it also offers a really crisp view mm -hmm. of facial expressions. I wrote down shame, joy, sorrow. I think it does a formidable job about layering all these complicated emotions. So without going into the mechanism of, as to why you made that choice to employ both, um, talk to me about the technical facet, about how it does elicit or add layers to uh, inner struggles. Um. Yeah, I think to start with black and white, and and uh, we uh, it was a decision from the beginning that uh, but we wanted to be black and white because um, there was no color when I was staying in a dormitory, and there was no space for nuances or or um, um, you are either. You know, uh, a Muslim or an infidel. You are. It's either black or white. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so that's why I thought it would be a symbolic representation of the life at Yurt. Um, and yes, because we are uh, also in terms of like aspect ratio, we are using, um, which gives a lot of body language, like a lot of space for bodies to move within the frame in a static frame and and it gives more um, um, it, it helps the spectator to engage with the character uh, more uh, and um, yeah um, so these were the um, that with these were the like artistic choices that we we, we it's pre-designed, yeah. Yes. Um, That's a very noticeable element, is like, there's a strong physicality in the film, the body's clashing, there's a violence, there's a tenderness. There's also this, this wave of body, that, like, I love the collective images, like when you set your figures in front of a television set, yeah. On multiple occasions, yeah. I love the. There's a harmony that exists. Yeah, there is this uh, proximity. Yeah. Because also that's also uh, a characteristic of. Yes, and it also comes from having a, a narrower aspect ratio. Because uh, there's this scene where Ahmed and uh, uh, getting ready for school, and Alakan is helping him with his jacket, with his tie. So they had to be close to be included within the frame. It was like if it was wide there would have been a space in uh, between them but we had to push it together so that it also helps us um, you know um, you know they're they're bonding they're yes. together and and uh, so um, and also with the same with the TV uh, sequences that like all of them together um, 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 I love that shot. Bonding. I fucking yes. love that shot. Uh, it, it's like a painting, and, and also it's one of my favorites in the in the film. Um, a lot of energy. You can read all the faces of yes, the boys. Yes, yes, very much so. There is this innocence and uh, almost like blessing the the kids and and the. I want to say I almost relate it to a sporting event and how all those eyeballs are all staring in one direction. It's quite, uh, it's, it's quite an alluring shot, but I like also how your film also uses specific instances or sequences, and not that you repeat those sequences, but you do frame it, you do revisit some things and add different uh, psychological layers or a, a different meaning or interpretation to the scene. Um, I'm gonna go to your supporting character because because I, I, I feel as if it's tied to the last question. There's a very complex nature to Akan uh, and the mechanics of friendship. There's so many dynamics that coexist in that one character. Um, he protects Ahmet, he takes advantage of him, 
he uses them, he educates them, and ultimately he saves them. And I thought that was such an interesting character to, to see develop over the course of what feels like, it could feel like two years, but it's very much over a couple of semesters. Yeah. Um, just, I, I want to get a sense of what you're looking for when you cast that actor in terms of how he's able to serve um, serve the, the this character, but also how he's able to um, give all these nuanced touches to a really complex relationship. Uh, um, I, we made a short film even before uh, this film. And, Just for the record, you made like close to a dozen short films, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And the last one was about, uh, was related to, it was like a prequel to, to Yurt. Um, and I worked with uh, the same actor there, Hakan, and he was playing the same character. And, uh, and I knew I was going to work with him in the feature as well, so I didn't do any auditioning um, for him. And we rehearsed a lot, like we had a lot of chance to re rehearse um, and, and we uh, explored together, uh, we tried different things, we changed a lot of dialogues. Sometimes there was a half a page of dialogue and then it reduced into just one look. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you need time for those things, like you need to digest. And, and, uh, and I was, I, I had all the time because it took forever to finance and develop. So, uh, so we had uh, rehearsed a lot and, and it's, um, of course, I'm really blessed to have very talented actors, but also, they also need um, help to minimize those moments or maybe sometimes accentuate. So it's, it's this harmony that, uh, that I was always paying attention to do uh, between scenes mm -hmm. or, or even seconds, like how to... So it was... Um, um, it was a good collaboration. It was... Uh, Psychologically, this character is really loaded. I mean, there's there's so much happening, and, and as we grow with him or grow apart from him, um, I was just amazed by just all the. I was thinking about it from a, a, just a, a writing perspective, but what you're saying is really, it's really nice to hear what you're saying is that you allowed for the perimeters to be expanded or then reduced because you want him to to give um, that sub substantial element to that, that, that yeah, it's always trying dynamic. And, and, and seeing it uh, yeah. uh, if or just having alternatives not like necessarily shooting shot contra shot but just having decided on one scene but sh sh uh, shooting it in a, on a different level of acting so that when you are in the editing room you can just play with that and, and make a good balance between scenes mm -hmm. so that it doesn't stand out in a bad way so like there is this uh, balance between, between among, the, among them. Remaining with characters, um, there's this insertion of a, a crazy eight in a car ride sequence. I don't want to divulge anything here mm -hmm. but what it told me is that you don't want to villainize necessarily villainize people. Uh, the father character has his own issues, is very complex and the actions that we see in this film they're either very hidden or overt. Again, um, the approach for you to take personal experience, write this screenplay, but then allow these characters that you probably at a young age saw them as one thing but understood that hey even the father He's not a bad person, he's just making perhaps not terribly great choices. Um, just talk about the importance of giving people a multi-dimensional aspects. Yeah, I mean, it's also, this also goes back to uh, uh, um, making the film black and white. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a reaction to having two-dimensional characters in the youth or the, the, the way they, they perceive themselves or they think of themselves like, um, this or that, like, mm -hmm. but that's not how life is. You know, we can be religious, but we can also have worldly um, 
desires and and we all have that and and uh, it's uh, but we repress it and they you know um, so it's all there it, it's it takes just a, a nudge to come out and and uh, and I think I was always keeping that in mind with also like with all characters for example with the father I mean yes he has found religion he has become um, maybe they used to be really good friends with his son but not anymore he doesn't show that anymore but there is this element in him still it's not gone yeah but at some point it comes out you yes know? And, and it, it manifests itself and 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 I, and pretty much every character has these kind of uh, uh, things in the film and yes i was uh, yeah uh, striving striving to find more balanced characters yes, and to and yes, to not paint not them to, as as one thing yeah not to like win a lot is uh, yes uh, one person blame one person but also try to understand their point of view. You had mentioned in, among the press over the last couple of days uh, that you are attracted to the coming of age genre. I was thinking a lot about Huck Finn, but I was also very surprised, uh, first of all, by the tone that, that there are moments, uh, like really seriously, tonally serious moments. There's also moments of levity and comedy, and I love how you infuse both of those things. Um, but there's also this, from my point of view, a very unexpected denouement. Like, I had no idea where you were bringing me as the viewer. I thought, where I thought this film would end, you, you extend it into a very colorful, I'll, I'll use a, a symbolic term here. Mm -hmm. um, the essence is, is, is felt or represented through subversiveness, uh, challenging norms, questioning authority, and pushing boundaries. Um, so what qualities were you looking for in your protagonist, the actor that you found, in order to inhibit um, all of this? And how did, how did he gain a foothold into understanding all these complex emotions that he was going through? Um, yeah, the biggest help to, to um, have uh, this, um, um, the, the biggest um, way for me to do this was, as I said, rehearsing yeah. and, and just uh, talking and discussing because I was never sure what I was doing really. Like it, you're, you're never sure, you always question and you know, a lot of like uh, hesitations and, and um, it's uh, putting one piece and then coming at, and putting another piece and another day it's, and connecting those pieces together it's a it, it's a process and and uh, because i was also uh rehearsing with my actors um and because they were very open um they were like um they were ready to observe okay uh, uh, absorb, absorb yeah uh, absorb what's given to them and then express it in on their in their own way and you know like hakan character has this like He's got way issues. Of talking yeah. and, and way of like talking and and what I write, um, I try to, uh, you know, just uh, use that, you know, yes. like not turn it into something what I thought it would be, but just allow him to to shape it up by himself. So uh, I think that's uh, why I was very flexible on that, and and uh, so that gave them an opportunity to shine. I don't think it's a spoiler, but at some point a, the foundation for a potential another dormitory yes. is is there. Um, so from a, from somebody who's unfamiliar with 1990s Turkey uh, and that specific political situation, what does that school potentially look like today? Is it is it well maintained? Is it completely dismantled? Like, how did that specific time period in your country's history, how does it look back today? And how did it sort of inform where we are today in, in, in modern uh, Turkish uh, society? Well, back in the 90s, there were um, more pressure on the um, religious uh, people uh, fight by the secular uh, forces yes um, so um, they were being labeled as extremists and it was hard to freely live uh, their beliefs and uh, and, and um, um, but uh, compared to today it has uh, more um, 
liberal, I would say, in terms of living your uh, Which, choices, especially if you are um, in Islam, religious, Muslim, yeah. uh, it, it's uh, there, uh, because the there is the power power dynamics has shifted and and uh, uh, um, and and um, is there more acceptance? Uh, Yes, because um, in terms of um, uh, yeah, over the years uh, there is the, the pressure uh, is gone in that sense, and then, I hear you. And then it, 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 it's it's uh, the number of these dormitories has uh, gone higher and more. Um, um, Part of the fabric of a larger society. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, um, compared to that era, yes, more people are being educated. In From the, the Sundance world. Labs to the Lido, uh, yeah. it's been a, a long journey. Uh, this has been with you for a very long time. Congratulations Thank on your you directorial so debut. Looking forward to the next films, but please enjoy the film festival circuit and living out of your suitcases and bringing this film to a whole bunch of different countries and nations and cinephiles. Thank you so much. Thank you. Teşekkürler. 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 Ben teşekkür ederim. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.